why the childcare funding system is broken and what 15 hours free government funding really means. Now, you may have heard about the free government funding that's available for all three year olds and for some two year olds. If you haven't, then I will explain a little bit about it shortly. I first want to go over what the intention of this video is. If you've heard a bit about the government funding or you've got some understanding, you may be under the impression that it's a really good idea for all parties involved. And on the face of it, it sounds like it. It's great for some parents that can't afford childcare as it gives their children access to learning that they might not have been able to get. It's also great for other parents as it gives them childcare at a discounted rate and allows them potentially to go back into work or allow them to work longer. It also increases demand for childcare places as more people will be seeking even more places or longer hours, which is great in principle. Though in this video, I'll try to explain why the current system isn't quite working and why some people feel that it's broken. But before getting into that, I'll give a quick explanation of how the government funding works. This is in reference to the 30 hours and 15 hours that children in England are entitled to. Other parts of the UK have their own system which is very similar and there is other types of support that you can get for childcare like universal credit which I will link an article if you want to learn about them in the description but we won't be going over it in this video. So to briefly explain, in England all three and four year olds are entitled to free 15 hours of funding which enables them to attend approved childcare providers like registered nurseries, registered childminders and registered nannies. These childcare providers must be registered with Ofsted. This funding is paid directly to the childcare provider. This parent just has to fill out a form to enable the childcare provider to claim those hours. What's important to note is that the 15 hours is for 38 weeks per year, which works out to 570 hours per year. It's important to note this because as you're probably aware, most childcare providers are open for longer than 38 weeks. This means that they spread their hours accordingly. So rather than getting 15 hours over 38 weeks, most will allow you to claim 11 hours over 51 weeks. For those of you that are quick at math, you will realize that 570 hours over 51 weeks is actually roughly 11.1 .1 or 11.2 hours per week. But you just miss out on those extra five, 10 minutes. The hours that you claim are set by the childcare provider. So you can't, for example, do 20 hours one week and then 10 hours the next week. If the child can provide us 15 hours per week, you can only use up to 15 hours that week. And if they do 11 hours, you can only use up to 11 hours that week. If you don't use all their hours, you just end up missing out on them. So although it's advertised as 15 hours per week, in most cases, you'll be able to claim 11 hours per week, as most child care providers are open for over 38 weeks, which as a child care provider has led to a lot of confusion for a lot of parents, but hopefully you understand it now. This is the same for the 30 hours, so if you're claiming 30 hours in most childcare providers, you'll actually be entitled to 22 hours per week. For the 30 hours, you have to apply for them. Not all children are eligible, though a lot of children who don't claim are currently. In order to be eligible, the biggest criteria that you need to fall into is that the family needs to earn under £100,000 per year. This is a combination of both parents' income. If both parents are working and earn under £100,000 per year, they will be entitled to this funding. There are some minimum earning requirements too, but this varies and is roughly £16,000 per year. So as long as you earn between these two, you can usually claim for the additional amount of funding, which most parents are unaware of. Finally, there's the 15 hours funding for two-year-olds. This is available for some two-year-olds via application and it's usually if there is some kind of need in the family. So it could be potential special educational needs, a disability need of the child or the financial need of the child. It's to help give additional support to those families that may need it. Again, you need to apply for this and then go directly to the childcare provider who will then claim the funding back from the government. So that's a quick explanation of how the free government funded hours work, which is available for two, three and four year olds. That explanation is for England, but Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland all have similar systems. So let's get into the video and why the current system isn't working. Starting a business no matter what field it is, is not easy. It takes a lot of time, effort, stress, and usually a lot of money. If you've already started along this journey of trying to open your own business, I'm sure you've had plenty of sleepless nights. Even if you plan everything meticulously, there is no guarantee of success. A key part of the planning process involves planning how much it costs to run your business. So for example, if you sell a product, you'll need to work out how much it costs for you to make that product, all costs involved. So if it costs you £6 to make it, you have to sell it for more than £6 in order to make a profit or sell it at £6 to break even. Likewise, if you run a service-based business, 
like nurseries, childminders, nannies or other childcare providers, you work out how much it will cost you to provide that service, usually per hour that you are open, and then charge more than this. This cost will include your rent, your wages, your utilities, business rates and any other cost involved with running. So let's say after your planning, you work out that all your costs coming together, it costs you £6 per hour to run your business. You then need to charge at least £6 per hour in order to break even and then start making a profit. If you charge any less than this, your business will not be able to operate. You will begin to lose money, you will lose the time that you put in, you will lose the employment of yourself and of the colleagues that you work with, and eventually you'll run out of money having to close, losing your business and essentially losing everything that you've worked hard for. So how would you avoid this situation? It's simple, you just need to charge the £6 per hour it costs for you to run your business. But even charging a £6 per hour would just be breaking even. It may not cover unexpected costs, like if you have to close for a period, or if something went wrong with your business that your insurance might not cover. So you might decide to charge £6.50 per hour to help make your business a bit more secure. This is generally the cost of childcare in some of the big cities, though it does vary throughout the country. But that's understandable, right? If it costs £6 per hour to run the service, most people understand that you'd have to at least pay £6 per hour to use that service. It's a shame that the government doesn't fall into that most people category. And that's where the problem lies. Imagine a scenario where the government are saying, no, no, we won't pay you the £6 per hour. And even if your costs increase, we won't increase what we pay you either. They're also telling you, you can't change what you offer too in order to reduce your costs. So you can't offer a slightly cheaper service for a reduced fee and you can't offer top ups to cover the difference between what they want to pay and how much you need to survive. They tell you, you have to provide the £6 per hour service but we're only going to pay you £5 per hour. What would you do? Remember, you can't change what you offer in order to reduce your costs and even still the bulk of the cost in childcare are to pay wages and as you're probably aware, it isn't the highest paying field already. So you can't reduce costs there. And remember, you're not allowed to get the additional £1 from anywhere else. You are told that you have to provide a £6 per hour service exactly as it is, but you're only going to get £5 per hour for it. What would you do? At what point would you say you've had enough? Well, that's what's currently happening across the country in a lot of different early year settings. The government are currently offering on average £4.99 per hour to cover the cost of the free government funded hours. However, the average nursery fee per hour is currently £5.40. That's almost a 50p deficit for every child and every hour that they care for. So if a nursery cares for 33 year olds claiming 30 hours per week, they'll be losing £441 per week compared to their usual fees. Running a nursery or childcare provider is not cheap. Nurseries and other childcare providers need money for rent, gas, electricity, staff wages, staff training, cleaners, cooks, the replacement of toys for tax, food, recruitment, pensions and lots of other costs. So it's understandable why many child providers aren't enthused about the free government funding that's offered and why many are calling for it to be reformed or fixed. So while some parents might read a news article about government funding being extended and think it's a good idea, many childcare providers read it feeling frustration. Imagine you went to work and they told you we want you to do additional hours, but for each additional hour that you do, we're going to pay you 50p less than what you usually get. Would you be excited to work those additional hours? Every government has stressed how important the early years are to the long-term success of children and their well-being and development. Giving children the best start in life is so important and early years settings play a crucial part in this. Yet the funds provided only allow staff to be paid a minimum wage. Increased pressure on staff coupled with less wages and an increased cost of living has led to a demoralised staff force, working hard with very little reward. Thankfully, many people stay in the field purely out of the love of caring for children. And there are lots of benefits that work with children gives that money simply can't. However, many good members of staff are leaving the field simply because it's not funded properly and they have the potential of getting better paid jobs in fields that are potentially less stressful. Most nursery owners, workers and child providers simply want to do what's best for the children that they care for. Their dream is not to become multi-millionaires, they simply want to cover their costs and provide a good service doing so. But this costs money, money that the current system is not providing for. This is why many are asking for reform. This is why some nurseries are closing 
and this is why the current funding system is broken.